Hello, my name is Ken, and I want to welcome you back to Deep Waters. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in our lives. The title of this message is Trinity. God is one with the Son. This is a multi-episode series in which this is episode four of eight. So far, no Holy Spirit, right? Let's look back in time, shall we? Acts 2.38, then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 8.16, For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts 10.48, And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. Acts 19.5, When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So will the real baptismal party please stand up? Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But wait, Peter said in Acts 2, 38, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. But so Matthew stated, 28.19, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So why didn't he say that then after you do this, you would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Is Matthew assuming that they already got baptized and that they were doing it a second time so that the Holy Spirit wouldn't feel left out? So now begs another question, as if we didn't already have at least a hundred. And that is, Do we now have the Holy Spirit because we baptize in the name of, or are we being baptized in the roles of, the three, or rather of the one? Are all of these baptism scriptures saying the same thing, whether it would be in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or in the name of Jesus? You see, it's not so easy in stitching these differences together to form the idea that God is Trinity as opposed to just a single God. Remember I stated earlier, we can find the scriptures to support our deception or our own way of thinking. It has been done for centuries. Keep in mind, I'm not asking you to join me in my thinking, but just to come along for the ride. Micah 5.2 But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel, whose goings are forth and from old, from everlasting. Now, when Micah says, shall come forth to me, me is capitalized. And then he says, the one to be ruler in Israel, the one and ruler is capitalized. So we see here we have one talking about the other. Separate, right? But is it? Didn't God create a problem to which he is also the only solution? Revelations 1.8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and was and who is to come, the Almighty. Wait, we have the Lord proclaiming that he is the beginning. Wait, now it is capitalized, beginning and the end, that he is, was, and will be, the Almighty. Jesus is stating he is the Almighty, that there was nothing before him, nor will be nothing after him. See the him? Him? Him. Hmm. Where is the Father chat now? I know he is at Jesus' left, but are they still one in that Jesus represents the humanity of God's as we do? And God represents the totality of God? John states, we are all one in another. So we now represent. Well, now I cannot say the original design, as all of this was on purpose from the beginning, because it was his purpose to begin with. I think I see for the first time here why God cannot be unequally yoked, why we cannot be unrepentant, unregenerated believers, and still be joined in unity with God. Yes, we are that close to him. And we now sit together in unity with God in Christ. And yet our new naturalness places us in the right context of deity, which is that we no longer strive to be a God, but are fully contented to be in he and he in we. He will forever remain as God, and we will never be closer to him than in that day, when because of the work of Jesus, we are now a part of the three in he. Revelation 117, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. Remember, he is the first and the last. 
no God before or after him. Jesus is a manifestation of God on earth in humanity. Revelations 22:13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. In a wonderful culmination, he uses all of the words in one statement, all six of them. Can it be clearer? Well, now wait a minute. Let me help. The beginning and the end could mean that these are end time words. That is, that Jesus is a first meaning Savior and the last meaning Savior. Thoughts? You see, if they don't support my one God theory, but is used to support the Trinity theory, then these six words, Alpha, Omega, Beginning, End, First, and Last, have to be end time words and not eternity applicable in the context of no beginning and no end stop. See, I told you I would help. LOL. For me, because both sides can be supported, but the truth remains in the revelation of these word exchanges. Is God actually one God in Christ? One God in Jesus? Does Jesus embody the totality of God? Well, this could be a third theory. Let's look at some other particularities that Jesus throws out. John 8, 19. Then they said to him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. We see that this could mean that Jesus was so near to God that all of everything between them was indistinguishable, that they were identical twins acting as one. But could he also be saying that I am God, who sits in the heaven and is also talking to you on earth, in and through my Jesus suit? John 14, 7. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Again, we see the indistinguishable attributes claimed by Jesus alone, where God was standing next to him, and someone forgot to include that little detail in the Bible. <laughs> John 14, 9. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Show us the Father? Is he saying that we are one and the same thing, and that what you see before you is a natural manifestation of me, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last? What helps or not with this line of thinking is that Jesus consistently refers to God the Father. John 8, 29. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do the things that please him. It is these types of statements that leads us to believe that God the Father is a separate God from Jesus but I'm not convinced due to the volume of scriptures that suggests that they are one and the same God. Did he not blow himself into Adam? Genesis 2, 7. So it could lead one to believe that in eternity, as we know it works differently than in time, God's spirit remained in heaven in a father's capacity, which is where he would have had to remain as Jesus was human and susceptible to sin, though without sin, Hebrews 4, 15. And we know that even God, the father, turned his head when Jesus became sin, before dying, because he could not look at such an unholy sight. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Question. Is it possible that God could not look at God because he allowed the natural God part of himself to become sin, that we would be restored to him through him? I'm not saying. I'm just saying. Matthew 27.46 And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I guess in short, what I'm thinking is that God was there and here at the same time. When we die, he leaves the dirt, and we go back to him in that spirit. Genesis 3, 9. It's not the Holy Spirit that departs from us when we die, and that is, his departure is the reason for us dying. Nope. He, the Holy Spirit, remains with us forever. John 14, 16. So if we look at this from an enterprise level, we see this epic portrayal of God breathing life into humanity and taking life from humanity without ever leaving his abode. 1 Samuel 2, 6. In Genesis 2, 7, we see that God breathed into dirt and it became a human. So he was and is now in his creation and in heaven concurrently. So could Jesus or the Lord or the Word be in two places at the same time, on the throne as father, on the throne at the right hand of himself as a natural man, and on earth as Jesus? 
I know it isn't easy, but I do this, we do this, that we would get to know the mystery, that we would know him more, not redefine him, not add or take away from what he has shared about himself, but like Jacob, to wrestle with him and go away blessed, oh, so very blessed. John fourteen seven, If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Undisputable. I see here that they are one and the same in two different locations. But you do not have to agree. John 14, 9, 11. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Again, John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Well, that's it for today. Getting rich, isn't it? Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from it. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, steal, and destroy the works of the enemy. And create space for the light of light to shine through in the people's lives. Plant a seed and click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks and see you next time in deep waters.